So let me um, introduce Joran Khrif. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> um, uh, Joran is uh, representing Tiger Beetle. So after I've given you an update on the, the VNEX work stream and what's been happening since the last PI meeting, uh, Joran is going to uh, talk to you a bit about Tiger Beetle. Would you mind just putting the slides on the second screen? I can't see those. Maybe if I stand up on this box. There we go. Okay. If I don't fall over. Okay. Um, so lots of you in the room will have already heard of VNext, um, but I... I imagine there's a significant number of people here who don't know what VNext is. So I'm gonna start by giving you a brief introduction. VNext is a completely new implementation of Mojuluk core service components. Uh, it represents a migration from JavaScript to TypeScript. Um, and it closely follows the Mojuluk reference architecture. Um, which was uh, a project um, that span out some years ago to map the business domain of what Mojuloop does. Um, and having a close alignment between the business domain and your software implementation has a lot of benefits. VNext is a drop-in evolution of the current product as the same underlying feature set with some enhancements. It has the same external APIs so it complies with the Mojuloop API specification. Um, because we're touching important parts of Mojuloop, um, which at its heart is a product to support critical financial infrastructure, uh, we're being conservative and taking a lot of care in this project to make sure um, we deliver a solid outcome. So why are we doing this? Well, there's a number of reasons why you want your software to evolve over time. Business requirements change. Uh, new features become desirable in a market. Um, code complexity tends to increase over time as new features are added and work is done to maintain a, a code base. Sometimes optimizations become apparent when you've owned and lived and operated a code base uh, for a period of time, very often you spot some uh, some ways of improving your system in terms of performance or ease of maintenance. So by simplifying your code structure, you reduce the risk and the, and the cost um, of maintaining and extending your product over time. Your code becomes easier to understand and reason about which means when it's time to add new features, change or maintain your product, uh, it's simpler and there's a lot less risk involved. And we like low risk things in our world. And um, also sometimes uh, in the tech world, new tools become available quite frequently. Um, one significant development since the start of the Mojuluk project is that types, TypeScript has become a lot more mainstream. So what's been going on since the last report out? Well, um, we completed assessment of the beta release and the results are extremely promising. Um, the work items that are remaining to take that beta release into production have been added to our GitHub backlog and we're working through that following the standard Mojuloop process towards incorporating those components in the official Mojuloop release. Um, contributions over this PI have been coming from Ditzerworks. Thank you very much, Interledger Foundation. Thank you. Um, and resource from the Mojuloop Foundation itself. Because this is such a significant change, um, we have engage the services of a transition manager to help us figure out the, the road from here to there. Um, 
the observant among us will have noticed Julie Goethe joining the Mojaloop Foundation recently. Um, but in the, the weeks and months before this, Jane Struchen from Infotex has stepped in. Uh, so we're very grateful to Jane for helping us in the short term uh, until Julie takes over. So we're transitioning our transition manager. Um, so we're trying to optimize the path from, uh, from the beta release towards production. Um, we don't want to have another stop the world review process. Um, so by, by changing into the, the standard Mojaloop Workstream Agile process, we can avoid that completely. The Workstream is engaged actively with the design authority, the product council, and the TGB. In the last PI, significant amount of work has been done. Uh, thank you very much to Vitzerworks. Um, you've made a huge contribution this last PI. Uh, some 40 epics and stories have been completed this PI. Um, so a big shout out to you guys. Uh, and big shout out to um, Cross Lake, who facilitated a lot of the early work, and Interledger Foundation, um, who have recently stepped up. Thank you, guys. Your contributions are massively appreciated. So uh, what do we do going forward? We have some areas of focus. Um, first of all, uh, as you will have seen in the core report out from Sam and the, the core team, um, we have a lot of uh, CI and CD standard uh, standard processes, which we use to maintain code quality, execute our test suites, make sure we're not introducing regressions uh, or defects as we move forward. So we're going to bring those practices um, and increase the coverage of those practices in the, the VNEX code repos. Um, we have to publish the administrative APIs and increase our level of documentation. Those of you familiar with the Agile software process won't be surprised that we always want to increase our documentation. Uh, the the core, core ledger um, is a, a significant um, change from the VNO implementation architecturally. Uh, so work is underway currently to complete and test our integration with Tiger Beetle. Um, I don't want to spoil the fun of telling you too much about Tiger Beetle. I'll leave that to Joran. Um, it, it is a mission critical component. Um, so the DA and the TGB are constantly engaging with the work stream currently uh, to make sure we do the right thing for Mojaloop. Um, the beta release um, had an awful lot of features and was a, a, a big step forward from the alpha release in terms of covering the, the Mojaloop API specification. Um, but we want to go to production with the same business scope that we have from the, the existing code base. Um, we have some uh, some work to do in closing the gap with uh, error path coverage and edge case support. And um, those of you who saw the settlement presentation, uh, I think it was yesterday, um, will notice there's been significant developments in that area. So we want to complete integrating that. So when we go to production, we have that new settlement functionality as well. Um, We have a release mechanism um, in progress, uh, which is to uh, to pull elements from the vNext uh, repos into our deployment pipeline. And there's a few UX and UI bugs and issues and features still in development. So before I hand over to Joran, um, we are working flat out on this work stream. Uh, a significant amount of effort is going in, um, lots of resources. We will be communicating some very clear milestones to everybody in the community very soon. Um, but please give us a couple of weeks to make that happen. Uh, we have some estimations to do on the backlog uh, and we need to uh, improve our knowledge of how fast we're gonna move through those before we can put a really hard and fast date in everybody's calendar for when you can expect to, to get your hands on this. Um, we are looking for any additional resource or contributions, and thank you to the people who have approached me so far this week offering their help. Um, that, that will be gratefully received. Thank you. 
Um, keep, uh, keep your finger on the pulse, guys. This is happening very soon. So, um, Joran, over to you to tell us something about Tiger Beetle. Thank you. Thanks, James. Uh, pleasure to be with you all today uh, to talk a little bit about Tiger Beetle. Uh, Tiger Beetle is a financial transactions database. Uh, let's just see how the slides coming up. Let's wait a second. Anybody know any good jokes? Has anyone ever seen a real tiger beetle? Ah, wait, wait. Ah, okay. What do they look like, Aaron? I've got a picture to show you. So as oh, soon as okay. the slides come up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Alvina, are we good at the back? Bear with us. Normal okay. service will be resumed shortly. Slides are on their way. Yeah. I think we need a rule at the, the next community meeting that if your slides don't appear within two minutes, you have to do a dance on stage. Uh, <laughs> okay. Can you nominate someone to do it for you <laughs> if they are on stage? <laughs> Right. There we go. Yeah. So again, yeah, pleasure to be here. Uh, Tiger Beetle is a financial transactions database. Uh, it's designed to be a thousand times faster uh, at processing instant payments for MojoLoop than existing databases. So before MojoLoop, existing switches, uh, they would take 20 to 30 year old generic databases. And then they would write 10,000 lines of code around them uh, you know, to build a switch that could switch the debits and credits as money moves. Um, so we noticed this four years ago in 2020. Um, I was consulting, luckily enough, to, to be doing performance work on the Moduli project. Um, and we saw that the problem is that generic databases only give you the low-level SQL transactions engine, but you still have to build the financial transactions chassis. You can't just get in and drive. Um, so they don't optimize primarily for financial transactions. Uh, they're not purpose-built for processing instant payments. And herein lies the second problem in that the world is becoming more transactional. Uh, so financial systems, they need to drive a thousand times faster today than they did in the past. Uh, because transactions are becoming smaller and more frequent, as literally the whole world moves to instant payments. So for example, let's take a look at India. Less than 10 years ago in 2017, India's instant payment system, UPI, processed 4 million transactions in the month of February. In one month, 4 million transactions. Two years later, in the same month in, in February in 2019, um, and India was suddenly doing 100 times more transactions per month. So again, just in one month, you've gone from 4 million to 600 million uh, per transactions per month. So I almost don't want to tell you what India is doing per month today, five years later. Uh, because if you imagine that poor, you know, 20 to 30 year old database sitting somewhere underneath, you know, those old switches, just think of what happens as you increase the volume of transactions. So Again, over two years from 2017 to 2019, we've already increased by a factor of 100 times, two orders of magnitude. Um, and then over the next five years, so here's the answer, from 2019 to 2024, 
let's just increase load again by another hundred times, you know, another two orders of magnitude. So we've gone four orders of magnitude from um, from six hundred. Well, yeah, from from six seventy four million transactions per month to twelve billion per month, and that's not a typo. Not not a typo. So in seven years, India went from four million to six seventy four million and twelve billion per month, and that's why I'm here today. Uh, to tell you that four years ago, uh, we realized that if we wanted to be all in on instant payments, uh, to not be crushed by the scale, uh, then we would need new database technology designed from the ground up to be a thousand times more efficient for MojoLoop um, compared to the databases used by existing older switches. Um, and that's because with technology, it's like building a car. So one thing to build a car with an engine from the 90s, another to race Formula One. Uh, but if you want to break Mach 10, then you need to rethink things. Uh, and not only performance, but especially safety. Uh, so this is the question we asked with Tiger Beetle. How can we take the four primary colors of computer science? Anyone know what they are? Network storage, memory, and compute. How can we take these four primary colors of computer science? How can we blend them using the latest research into a faster, safer database design for the future, for where the world is going, um, for the next 30 years of transactions. So it's my great pleasure then today, four years later, to come home to Mojuloop. Mojuloop is our home. It's the birthplace of Tiger Beetle. And a great pleasure to share with you all uh, that Tiger Beetle is now production ready. So we cut our first... Uh, yeah, that's that's worth a big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. So we we cut our first production release last week on Tuesday. I flew to New York, flew straight back to Cape Town, and flew straight back here um, to deliver it in person to you. And it's really so so special, so humbling to be able to be part of the Mojoloop dream. It is a dream, and it's going to happen. And it, it's so so special to to be a part of that dream. And I say this on behalf of the whole Tiger Beetle team. Uh, just to give a big thank you to everyone here um, who believed in and supported Tiger Beetle um, at Mojoloop. Um, you've been waiting for this. Uh, you've been architecting for this, coding for this for some time. Uh, you've been patient also, thank you. Uh, so Mojoloop will be the first switch then to be powered by Tiger Beetle um, to enforce financial consistency directly in the database um, and to unlock a thousand times more performance and cost efficiency uh, than existing databases. So as many of you know, having followed the journey, uh, Tiger Beetle guarantees the highest level of consistency in strict serializability. Um, it's one of the first databases in the world also to actually provide storage fault tolerance down to the level of a disk sector. So to be one of the first that can actually survive and heal from disk corruption as disks fail in your data center. And they do fail, you know, there's a 1% chance every two year period. Um, and we do this by incorporating 2018 research from University of Wisconsin Madison. Uh, it's called protocol aware recovery for consensus based storage. Uh, so Tiger Beetle can run across multiple data centers or availability zones, uh, regions, it can even run across multiple cloud providers simultaneously uh, to provide extremely high availability. So this is something you typically only see from proprietary cloud databases. Of course, they can't run multi-cloud, um, but Tiger Beetle has been licensed under the Apache 2.0 um, open source license. And this is something we learned and inherited from Mojoloop. It's the commitment to inclusion and open source as the best vehicle for powering the future of instant payments. Uh, so Tiger Beetle is a single binary, very small, zero dependencies. It's about the size of a floppy disk. We've tried to make this thing the most extreme system we could engineer. Um, and you can run this on a few machines. You get a database cluster, multi-AZ, multi-region, multi-cloud. It's, it's so easy to set up. It's predictable. It's easy to operate. Um, and that's why we called it Tiger Beetle, um, after one of the fastest creatures on Earth. Uh, with a small footprint, uh, and it's able to thrive in tough environments. So why big iron when you can beetle? Of course, processing financial transactions, it's close to nuclear. So it's not enough to be as safe as 20 to 30-year-old technology. 
you need to be 10 times safer today. Uh, so to achieve the safety for Tiger Beetle, we adopted NASA's Power of 10 rules for safety critical code. Uh, this means there are over 6,000 assertions in Tiger Beetle. Uh, there's code to check the code. Uh, everything is double and triple checked with thousands of tripwires. Uh, it's like that movie Entrapment, you know, when they try to go to the top of the, the vault in the top of that building and the, the gates slam down. Tiger Beetle's got 6,000 of these tripwires that, that can shut things down. So you either run correctly in production or you shut down safely. Um, and then beyond this, to provide enterprise support, uh, we raised investment um, uh, to incorporate Tiger Beetle in the US as a database company, um, to build trust and to grow the open source community around Tiger Beetle. Um, which is growing uh, really nicely on, on GitHub. Um, and our latest talk on YouTube uh, received 170,000 views for one talk. Um, and developers around the world are excited to use Tiger Beetle. Um, so at scale, a single Tiger Beetle cluster can, is tested uh, to process at least 100 billion financial transactions. Um, or you can take a small Raspberry Pi cluster, which we love to do, and you can do 10,000 financial transactions a second. At least this is what we could do on very old, slow micro SD cards. Um, so you can go multi-region, like I said, for example, multi-region, but only within AWS, for example, or, or any other cloud provider, multi-region, and you can do about 123,000 transactions per second. But there's also not much hit if you wanna go multi-cloud for regulators, which is a new thing in Europe and, and the States at least, where so you can be running across AWS and GCP all the time and it, you know 108,000 TPS, not far off. So this is with average hardware. Um, but on an office laptop, Tiger Beetle is able to do 300,000 financial transactions a second. And this is also with indexes on, on all the data. Let's just index everything. So in future, we, we have a lot of query support in Tiger Beetle already. And we'll be adding even more so you can query anything um, with very predictable queries. Um, so with primary indexes only, uh, which you can use for change data capture into a data warehouse, um, now you're starting to do 640,000 financial transactions per second. Um, and we're aiming still for a million. Um, this means that in terms, and this is a million, you know, with, with primary indexes and change data capture indexes. So this means that in terms of cost efficiency, you can replace a cluster of 192 Postgres machines with six Tiger Beetle machines. Um, but how do you overtake decades of testing? So that is the one thing that, you know, 20 to 30 old technology gives you. You get two decades of testing. Um, so just like you would train a pilot to fly um, a plane, you know, you don't train them in a real plane. You put them in a flight simulator and they put hours on the clock. We designed Tiger Beetle in the same way. So we designed Tiger Beetle. It can run in a simulator, a database simulator. And this is using a new technique called deterministic simulation testing. So the simulator, it abstracts time. We had to design Tiger Beetle very carefully to run in this kind of new, new simulator. The simulator can abstract time, and then you can speed up time in a while true loop. Um, so... This means that if you run the simulator for three seconds, you've actually simulated 40 minutes of runtime. And we run 100 cores 24-7, 100 simulators. This means in one day, um, we're fuzzing two centuries a day. So you know, traditional databases, they've only been tested for 20 to 30 years. It's actually not very long to get to all. They, they're still finding in the research you know, how these systems fail as you corrupt the disk because they can't handle that. Um, but Tiger Beetle, we're, we're actually every day, we simulate 200 years of runtime. It's just a new technique. Foundation DB did it. Um, Apple did it with their Cassandra. And Tiger Beetle, I think, is the third database in the world to actually use this new technique. So it gives you very, you know, you can sleep well at night. Um, and the way the simulator works is we take all our explicit fault models. So we expect the disk to corrupt things. We make that an explicit fault model. Again, most databases assume the disk will never do that. Um, but we take all our fault models, you know, what the network can do, how the processes crash, how the disk breaks. And then the simulator will inject all these faults um, and it will check them. It's actually like a formal model checker, but instead of checking some abstract specification of a protocol, which is what everyone does, this is actually checking the actual code. 
So there's no gap. So it's like the real tiger beetle and you put it in a model checker and then you speed up time. Um, so, um, and then the simulator can automatically open a GitHub issue. Uh, this is really cool. So we run, again, 100 of these simulators 24-7. They find a bug. The bot will automatically open it. You can go to our GitHub repo and look at some of these samples. Um, so they will they will classify the bug. Say, look, this is a liveness issue or a crash. We haven't had any correctness issues for some time now. Um, and then we can we can debug um we can replay you know these issues again and again we've got a deterministic seed and it it means that we can really fix tiger beetle because you just go so much faster you don't have to wait a year to replay a bug that takes a year just speed up time in the simulator fix it and you're done uh so th this is sort of how these are all the techniques you know that we use to make tiger beetle the safest database we could possibly have built um so I just want to see my clicker is, is no longer clicking, but that is no problem at all because <laughs> law of demos, I'm going to try and bring us something and see if it works. Um, if it doesn't work, it's fine. I'll give you a website that you can go to to, to see it. But let's see if we, if we can get this right. Um, so, so what, what we've, we've done, done is... is Hopefully that's good now. So we've taken the simulator and then we've put a, um, a fun game visual, you know, front end on top of the simulator. Normally it runs in the command line. So, you know, we get to see it, but to show you, I've told you about it, now let's show you. So we've, we've compiled the whole virtual, you know, Tiger Beetle cluster in the simulator. We compiled it with WASM. This is running in the browser and the Tiger Beetle code doesn't even know it's you know you know are we living in a simulation some maybe and but are we living in a simulation that's running in wasm in the browser here we are and um so this is the first um the first there's three levels just to show you and they show tiger beetle running under various levels of stress so the first level is prime time everything's good network's perfect processes never crash the disk is perfect um and I'm not going to speak too much um, because otherwise we're going to echo here. Um, Primary of the cluster. Got it. Yeah. The common request, and you're starting to see the replication. Working again. We passed that that simulation, which is fine. And again, it's pretty easy. Nothing went wrong. Let's see. Let's make things a little harder. This is the standard. What we're going to see now about how databases are typically tested, where we assume that the network can do things. How are we going to mess with the network? And in this particular simulation now, you can see we had, the last one we had a cluster of five beetles. This one we had six beetle machines. And they're each executing the real tiger beetle code. And we're simulating the network between them, crashing the processes, breaking the network. But this time we've got four clients right at the top. Now you start to see there's so much chaos that we are re-electing the primary all the time. Census protocol in impossible five spots to isolate the needles. We can also have some fun. Let's let's poke the simulation, shall we? Yeah. 
is this going to be? Fresh that people again. I, it's my favorite. Just to come out. And this is so tiger beetle passes. And this is normally what the Jepson test would do. Most databases try to trust. Jepson always find the these things are really no problem. I think let's stop there. The next step is going to be radioactive storage corruption. Maybe let's not do this live on stage. What do you think? Can we call it a day and say happy days. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Thank you, Jorn. Let's get radioactive. Congratulations. I was really kidding. So we are going to do it. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Now we're corrupting the disk. Every time we write something to disk, we corrupt it eight percent. We will we will write it to the wrong sector. Or when we read from the disk, nine percent of the time we read from the wrong location. Does the database handle it? And this is the protocol aware recovery for story research. Enables type of five. Twenty eighteen research, so almost nobody has has it. But, um, we're wrapping the beetles with the cosmic They're surviving. It's just not. Yeah. Pick that duck. I went for you. You should go home and try and see what happens if you pick that little duck that's floating and swimming in the pond. Tribute to our friends at DuckDB in the OLAP space. You'll, you'll have to go home and see. Um, and you can go in your browser, go to sim.tigerbeetle.com. Sim.tigerbeetle.com. You'll see exactly the same thing that's all the terms. We put a little bit of a tribute in here. Some of you might see your names. Um, Ola. your support again. Great to be here. Thanks, James. For Thank you so much, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Fantastic. Super excited to get that technology into Mojo Loop as soon as possible. Um, okay. I think um, we'll hand back over to Paul. I think we're going to allow everybody to go to lunch two minutes early. Thank uh, you, everybody. Not yet. Um, oh. I think it might be a good idea if you if you take one or two questions before we move on, James. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Are there any questions? It's quite hard to see the room from up here. Miller has a question. Thank you, Miller. Mostly a mechanical one that, I mean, first of all, fantastic to see this demo and uh, been on your journey with you for four years. This is just fantastic. And to really show that in the simulator, to watch what happens if you put these disks into a, a situation that hopefully none of us will ever experience. Uh, the integration of Tiger Beetle into Moja Loop, of course, is uh, a, a somewhat difficult process because it's at the center of the universe. It is what we do. Uh, we have uh, a convergence now of our, our code strategy from where we've been uh, since the beginning of the project up until we now have a convergence program and underway to bring the new architecture in place. Is Tiger Beetle, the integration, uh, compatible with the 16 release? Is it a 17 release item? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't remember the names, Congo or uh, uh, yeah, thanks, whatever. Yeah, thank you. That's so basically, when, when is it going to actually... How soon can you have it? it? Thank you, um, yes. Okay. <laughs> the answer to that um, was in my slide deck, um, which says, please give us a couple of weeks to um, to figure out what that date is going to be. Um, so the items are in the backlog to complete that integration. Um, we have to estimate them in a lot more detail before we can put an actual stamp on the page to say when that's going to happen i know that's not a fantastic answer that's the best we can do at the moment we are absolutely flat out trying to size that backlog measure our velocity and give some firm dates 
Fantastic. And I guess then the follow-up, of course, is the performance work stream. We would love to then rinse and repeat once we have this at the center of the universe. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, there's that's just more work, of course. But we're getting to where we have a repeatable performance uh, test case, as I understand it. Uh, Infotex has a, a great stack that they can run the software on. And we've been able, as I understand it, to run both the VNext uh, convergence uh, program as well as the old code base yeah. in those environments. And so we can get a sense of where we're going. Uh, so being able to you know, merge in all of this stuff, <laughs> I mean, it's a yeah. ton of work. I realize that. But, it is, yeah. Uh, we do want to get is. to a point where we can make some explanations to people about what exactly we've done. So we're saying, you know, not only is this thing now running a hundred times faster than it was before, but it's actually now more secure than having used the traditional database in the same role. Uh, and make some fairly complex statements uh, in a simple way that explain why we've done what we've done. Mm. Uh, so, but just kudos to everybody that's been on this journey. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to have a technology purpose designed for our our very hardest problem. Uh, it's a, It's a game changer for us. We're, we're moving as fast as we can to, to bring it to all our adopters and the community. Thank you.